Hello and welcome, my name is Will and in today's video I'm going to show you how to paint up Death Guard Plague Marines in a variant of a Pallid Hand scheme from the Codex. This will be part 1 where I bring the Plague Marines up to tabletop standard using basic techniques to give a good starting point for the scheme. In part 2 I will add a bit more detail and use some slightly better techniques, but for now let's get these models ready for battle. After assembling the models and sticking some cocktail sticks to their feet so they were easier to hold, I gave them a base coat of white using the airbrush. Now don't be put off by the fact I used the airbrush, you can use a can of white spray paint for the same effect. Now onto the main colour for my scheme and that's Ushabti Bone from Games Workshop. I stuck the models into painting handles so they were easier to work with. I highly recommend getting a few of these if you're painting a few models at once as they allow you to put them down and pick up the next one easily without faffing about with wet paint. I'll stick a link below if you want some of these at a discount. I took the Ushabti Bone and watered it down on the palette about one to one with water. This just means for every drop of paint, I've put an equal amount of water in the mix. I then paint the models all over the armour with two thin coats, leaving the weapons and any metal spikes white, but I wasn't worried about being too neat here. It's definitely worth doing two thin coats here, as this bone colour will be the majority of the paint scheme, and it needs to look smooth. Next we're onto the hardest technique of the paint scheme, but don't worry, it's not too difficult, it's just a little time consuming. We're going to recess shade all the edges and details of the armour. I'm using Agrax Earthshade and a fine detail brush for this, getting a little bit on the brush and gently tracing all of the recesses around the whole model. This is a good technique for learning patience as it can take a while, but the models look fantastic afterwards and we're only the second colour in. During this step I also painted the trim of the shoulder pads entirely in Agrax Earthshade. I think the results of this step make a real difference by adding lots of depth to the model in one go. While I had the Agrax Earth shade out, I also painted a couple of leaking fluid stains coming from holes in the armour like this one here. Now we're going to move on to the metal details and for these I'm going to use a thin watered down coat of lead belcher. I'm going to paint this on all the weapons, spikes and chainmail as well as the horns. I like to think of these horns as metallic growths rather than organic bones as in my mind this colour scheme is all about rusty metals rather than the standard organic gooey plague marines you usually see with bone protrusion. After the metal base coat of lead belcher we're going to use typhus corrosion straight on top. Make sure you give this paint a really good shake as it has tiny texture bits in it and we want those on the metal parts to give them a rusty texture. You have to be careful with this colour as it's easy to spill onto the cream armour but don't worry if you do, just neaten it up with a bit of white and then cream on top and then recess shade it again. The dark corroded metal pairs really nicely with the lighter bone brown of the armour. A splash of colour next using Riser Rust Orange which is a paint made for dry brushing. This is an easy technique that involves getting a very small amount of paint on the brush. I find a small flat brush best for this. Brushing most of it off on a piece of paper and gently dragging the paintbrush across the sharp edges of the dark metal bits. Another spot of colour now, and that's a turquoise discolouring you get on some metallic surfaces, typically involving copper, and it's called verdigris weathering. The paint we're using to achieve this look is called Nihilac Oxide, I think that's how you pronounce that. You can skip this step if you don't like this colour, it isn't for everybody, but if you do like it, we're going to be applying it by recess shading again on the dark corroded metal. We're going to pick out just a few spots for this colour, as it can be a bit overpowering if there's too much on. Less is more here really. The next details we are going to tackle are any wooden bits like the grips on the bolters or the barrels of the blight launchers for example. For this I'm going to use Rhinox Hide Brown and apply two thin coats. Onto the fabrics, fleshy pipes and any demon faces now. We are going to brighten them up with a quick coat of Corax White base coat so they are nice and bright for the next colours.
For the fabrics, we're using the contrast paint Volopus Pink, which I think goes really well with the Death Guard models, but I appreciate it might not be the colour for everyone. A dark green is a better colour match, as you can see on this other model I painted. Anyway, if you do go with a contrast pink, just apply it a little at a time over the fabrics to get the cool contrast effect. Be careful to take off any excess with a dry brush or a tissue before it pools and dries. Onto the demon faces and tentacles now, and all we're going to do for these are three washes. The first wash is Athonian Camo Shade, which is a green. The second is Reichland Flesh Shade, which is a reddy flesh colour. And the third is Drooky Violet, which is purple. You can do these in different orders to get slightly different effects if you like, but I prefer doing them in this order to give a sort of heavily bruised skin look. Do some experimenting though, it's the best way to learn. Also, pox walkers are cheap and numerous for practicing on. <laughs> Moving on to another spot of colour, and that is Luminous Green Toxic Waste Drips. We're going to start with another pass of Corax White on all the gooey drops to brighten them up again. Now a lot of people use the Nurgle's Rot Technical Paint to coat the drips on these models, as it gives them that snotty look, but as my scheme isn't as gooey as normal Plague Marines, I opted to use Hexwraith Flame for that toxic waste look instead. It might be a bit vibrant for some, but it adds a nice bit of colour and it is a really easy way of doing plasma guns in seconds. And lastly, we're going to paint up little details that we've missed, like these ammo pouches. I'm going to be really quick with this step and just use snakebite leather contrast paint to get them coloured and done. And there we go, I'd call that tabletop ready. They've got a few colours on them and they look reasonably spar and ready to do battle. I've definitely missed a few details, some by accident, some deliberately, to show how we can improve next time. But for now, let's get some bases done and get these models finished. Firstly with the bases, I'm going to stick them on a painting stick and give them a spray up in white. Next I'm going to give the tops a base coat of Cabalite Green. This is because it pairs nicely with Nurgle's Rot which we'll be using later. I water this down on a palette as it only needs a quick covering. Next is the generous helping of the Stirland Mud Texture Paint. You can use various tools to apply this. I find a wooden stick is best for getting it out of the pot, but a brush is best at manipulating it when it's on the base. But use whatever you prefer. I'm going to apply it leaving a few patches of green showing which will become gooey puddles later on. I rough up the texture a bit by dabbing with a brush after I've finished applying. Now it wouldn't be a Nurgle model without some snot somewhere. I'm going to apply Nurgle's Rot to all the puddles. I use a fair amount as the thicker the paint the stronger the colour ends up being. Don't worry though, where it's thin it shows through the underlying Cabalite green. Don't worry about being too neat either as it adds to the look if there's a bit of overspill onto the mud. Next is a quick dry brush of Tyrant Skull all over the mud texture. Same as we did before, get a bit on your brush, brush most of it off on a piece of paper and drag the brush gently over the mud texture. To add a little character, we're going to use some grass tufts that resemble dried or unhealthy looking grass, sort of a light brown colour. This will tie in with the model's paint scheme. These ones I had were self-adhesive, but I always like to add a bit of PVA glue to make sure they stick. I'm careful to leave enough space for the model's feet to stand on either side of the bases. And the final thing to finish the bases, I'm going to do two thin coats of Steel Legion Drab Brown around the rim of the base. It's a nice light brown that really ties together the paint scheme. It's worth doing two thin coats as if you apply paint too thick here it will really show brush strokes badly. Last quick job is to cut off any painting sticks you may have used. Paint the underside of their feet if you need to and super glue them down onto the bases. And we're all done. These models are ready to bring war to the puny Imperium and infect squishy Xenos with their rust plague. But if you'd like to add a little more detail then check back soon for part 2 where I'll show you some edge highlighting, 
dirtying down with pigments and some huge pointy layered white teeth. Thank you for watching. If you found the video helpful and enjoyable, please leave a like and hit subscribe and I've left some affiliate links in the description you can use if you'd like to help out the channel. I hope to see you back in the next video, but until next time, bye bye.